In today's video, we continue with the Merchant of Venice. We will take the portion from Act 1, Scene 1 and discuss lines 119 to 185. This is the portion where we find Antonio and Bassanio. They are talking about Portia, Bassanio's desire to go to Belmont. He has a need for a loan for this particular trip. And how does Antonio respond to this request? So this is the portion we are going to consider. We will see a line by line explanation of this particular portion. Then we will look at some probable questions that can be asked and a brief discussion of the answers. So let's begin. So the portion begins from the dialogue of Antonio, where he says, Antonio, his words are addressed to Bassanio. He says, well, tell me now what lady is the same to whom you swore a secret pilgrimage that you today <laughs> promised to tell me of. Now, Antonio is asking Bassanio, what lady is the same? Who is the lady to whom you swore a secret pilgrimage? You were supposed to visit a lady secretly. You promised that you today promised to tell me off and you were supposed to tell me about that lady today. So tell me, who is that lady? He calls it a secret pilgrimage. So what we need to note over here is secret. We understand he is not going to tell many people about it. But the point is, why is it called a pilgrimage? The reason is a pilgrimage we know is a trip to a holy place. Why is the trip to Belmont considered a pilgrimage? Because Portia is often referred to as a goddess. Elsewhere in the drama, you remember, she is called a mortal breathing saint. And hence, the trip to Belmont is called a pilgrimage. So Antonio has asked Bassanio, tell me who is the lady whom you are going to visit secretly? You had promised to tell me about her today. Bassanio, tis not unknown to you, Antonio, how much I have disabled mine estate. So Bassanio does not give the name of this lady directly. We understand that he kind of prepares a groundwork before he actually speaks to Antonio about what he has in his mind. So first he makes a confession to Antonio. What is this confession? He says, it is not unknown to you. Means it is well known to you, Antonio, how much I have disabled mine estate. Disabled means reduced. How much I have reduced mine estate. Estate means wealth. So he's making a confession to Antonio. He's telling him, you know very well, Antonio, how I have reduced my wealth. And then he explains the reason in the following lines. By something showing a more swelling pot, than my faint means would grant continuance. So he says that I have been showing a more swelling pot. Now here, what does swelling pot mean? Swelling means very showy or ostentatious. And pot here means the style of living. So he has been showing a more swelling pot, which means he has been leading a lavish lifestyle than my faint means would grant continuance. His means, his wealth is faint, very limited. Though he has limited wealth, he has been leading a very ostentatious life. He has been showing a more swelling pot. He says, my faint means would grant continuance. My limited means does not allow me to continue with this lavish lifestyle that I have been leading till now. Nor do I now make moan to be abridged from such a noble rate. Nor do I. I do not make moan. Here moan means I am not complaining. Now, says Bassanio, I do not complain that I have to abridge. Abridge means shorten. 
I have to reduce from such a noble rate. In other words, he's saying that I have reduced my estate. The reason is I have been leading a life that is much beyond what my faint means would allow me to. Now I have to abridge my noble rate, my noble way of living. But I don't make a moan about it. I don't complain about it. But my chief care is to come fairly off from the great debts. But my chief care, my chief worry is to come fairly off from the great debts. I wish to pay off my great debts in a fair manner, in an honorable manner. That is my chief worry now. Wherein my time something too prodigal hath left me gauged. In my time, I have been too prodigal and it has got me involved in a lot of debt. So what does Bassanio say? He makes a confession. He says, I have been leading a very lavish life, even though I have very faint means. Because of this, I have reduced my wealth. Now I can no longer continue to lead a lordly way of life. But I do not mourn about it. I don't complain about it. But I have one chief worry. And what is that worry? That I want to pay my great debts. And I have incurred these debts because I have been too prodigal. I have been too extravagant. Then he says to Antonio, To you, Antonio, I owe the most in money and in love. When it comes to Antonio, Bassanio says, I am your greatest debtor. Why? Because I owe you not just money, but I also owe much in the matter of love. Means you have been very kind, you have been very affectionate and loyal towards me. To you, Antonio, I owe the most in money and in love. And from your love, I have a warranty to unburden all my plots and purposes. How to get clear of all the debts I owe. So now he tells Antonio, I have become a debtor to many people, but to you, I owe the most in money and in love. You have not just lent me money, but you have always been very loving towards me. So I am a great debtor to you. And from your love, and because I'm assured of your love for me, and because I'm assured of your affection for me, I have a warranty. I have a guarantee to unburden all my plots and purposes. I want to unburden, I want to reveal to you all my plans, all my purposes, how to get clear of all the debts I owe. So Bassanio is telling Antonio, because I know you love me, because I'm assured of your love, I want to tell you how I plan to get clear of all the debts I owe. How do I plan to pay off my debts? So before we go further, let's have a quick look at this portion. You should understand the term the phrase secret pilgrimage. It is a trip which is a secret trip. He is going to visit Portia without telling everybody about it. It is referred to as a pilgrimage because Portia is equated with a goddess. She is called as a mortal breathing saint. Swelling pot here it means a lavish style of living. This particular scene is important because we are introduced to the character of Portia. What do we learn about Bassanio from this particular extract? First, he is a prodigal, extravagant in his ways. You could say he was reckless. He was irresponsible the way he has incurred a lot of debt. However, we can see that he is also a romantic enterprising and adventurous. This comes to the fore a little later when he starts talking about Portia. We go further. Antonio says, I pray you good Bassanio, let me know it. So what does it refer to? It refers to the plots and the purposes that Bassanio has just mentioned. He said, I will reveal to you those plots and plans, those plots and purposes. 
So Antonio says, I request you, Bassanio, let me know it. Let me know your plan. And if it stand, and if your plan stands as you yourself still do within the eye of honor. In other words, if you, you are an honorable man, Bassanio, if your plan is also an honorable one, be assured, says Antonio, be assured my purse, my person, my extremist means lie all unlocked to your occasions. So Antonio says, if your plan is an honorable one, be assured my purse, all my wealth, my person, I myself, my extremist means all that I have lie all unlocked to your occasions. I will be willing to go to any length to help you. This is what he means to say. So you can see here Antonio, very generous, ever ready to help, very willing to help. And you can also see the affection he has for Bassanio. So this is what we can assess of Antonio's character here. Now Bassanio, he still does not broach the topic of the loan. He starts off with a bit of his school days. Here Bassanio starts with an illustration pertaining to his school days. Now why does he do so? Perhaps Bassanio does feel a bit awkward because from what follows we know this is not the first time he's taking a loan from him. He says I already owe you a lot of money. So Bassanio perhaps is feeling awkward and so he prepares the ground for request and the way he speaks is very charming and very convincing indeed. So what does Bassanio say? He tells Antonio, in my school days, means when I was a child and I was studying in school, when I had lost one shaft, when I had lost one arrow, shaft means an arrow, I shot his fellow. His fellow means I shot another arrow of the self same flight, the self same way. So if I lost one arrow, I would shoot another arrow in the same direction, self same flight, the self same way. I would shoot another arrow of the same size, the same length in the same direction. An arrow which had the capacity to travel the same speed as the first one with more advised watch. So when I would lose one arrow, I would shoot another arrow in the same direction, but with more advised watch. But when I would shoot the second arrow, I would be vigilant. I would watch it carefully to find the other fourth, to find the first one. And by adventuring both, I often found both. And by adventuring both, by risking both, I had to risk both of them, but I would often find both the arrows. I urge this childhood proof. I use this childhood proof, this incidence from my childhood, because what follows is pure innocence. Because what I'm going to tell you now, there is nothing wicked about it. It is pure innocence. I owe you much. I owe you a lot of money. And like a willful youth, and like a willful youth, like a reckless youth, like an irresponsible youth, that which I owe is lost. Whatever money I have taken from you, I have squandered it away. I lost that money. But if you please to shoot another arrow. Now he is telling Antonio, if you please shoot another arrow. Here arrow refers to another loan. If you let another loan, that self way, which you did shoot the first. If you send another loan the same way as you sent the other, I do not doubt. I have no doubt as I will watch the aim. I will be vigilant. I'll be watchful. I will see where it is going or to find both or bring your latter hazard back again. I will be able to find both. I'll be able to recover both the loans, both the amounts of money, or at least bring your latter hazard back 
your second loan I'll be able to recover and thankfully rest debtor for the first. And in case I'm not able to pay the first loan, I will always remain thankful. I will always be obliged to you for the same. So interestingly, he says, I will try to recover the amount of money you have given me. I will try to recover both the loans. At least I'll try to pay you the second loan, if not the first one. And if I'm not able to pay the first loan, I will remain ever grateful to you for what you have done. Now, Antonio, after listening to the childhood proof, to the example of Bassanio's childhood, Antonio seems to be a bit offended or he is a bit impatient. And he, so he says to Bassanio, you know me well and here and spend but time to wind about my love with circumstance. He says, you know me well. Why are you spending time? Why are you wasting time winding about my love, talking about my love with circumstance? Why are you talking to me in an indirect way? Why are you beating around the bush? Why are you talking in a roundabout manner? And out of doubt, you do me now more wrong in making question of my uttermost than if you had made waste of all I have. So interesting, here Antonio says, out of doubt, you do me now more wrong. You wrong me. You do an injustice to me. Why? Because you doubt me. Do you doubt that I will not use my uttermost resources to help you? Are you questioning my willingness to help you? And then he says, if you had made waste of all I have, if you had squandered away all the money I have, all the wealth I have, I would not have felt bad. Now, you doubt my ability to help you. You doubt my willingness to help you. That makes me feel upset. Then like a real friend, he says, then do but say to me what I should do. Just tell me what I should do. That in your knowledge may be by me be done. Just tell me. What do you think? In your knowledge, what can I do? And I am pressed unto it and I'll be obliged to do it. Therefore, speak. Speak, what do you want? So now finally Bassanio comes to the topic. He says, Bassanio, in Belmont is a lady richly left and she is fair and fairer than that word of wondrous virtues. So finally Bassanio comes to the point and mentions about that lady. In Belmont, she lives in Belmont, is a lady richly left. She is a lady who has inherited a huge fortune. She's a rich heiress and she is fair. She's beautiful and fairer than that word. She's more beautiful than what could be understood by the word fair, fairer than that word. Her beauty is beyond description of wondrous virtues, of beautiful qualities, wonderful qualities. Sometimes from her eyes, I did receive fair speechless passages. Bassanio has met Portia and when she looked at him, from her eyes, says Bassanio, I did receive fair speechless messages. I received beautiful unspoken messages of love. So Portia looked at him with a lot of love. If you remember, later on in the play, you get to know that Bassanio had visited Belmont in the company of the Marquis of Montferrat. And that is the time when he had met Portia. He says her name is Portia, nothing undervalued to Cato's daughter, Brutus's Portia. So this girl from Belmont, her name is Portia. But there is another Portia that we know of. Who is this other Portia? She is the daughter of Cato and the wife of Brutus. So this Portia of Belmont is nothing undervalued, in no way inferior to the other Portia that we know of, the other Portia of history. So who was this Portia? She was the daughter of Cato, the wife of Brutus. And you know Brutus, it reminds you immediately of Julius Caesar. Nor is the wide world ignorant of her worth. In other words, 
the wide world the great world knows about her they they have the knowledge of her they know about her for the four winds blow in from every coast renowned suitors four winds here refers to the four directions from every direction there are renowned suitors there are well known eminent people who are coming to belmont as suitors to win portia's hand in marriage and her sunny locks hang on her temples like a golden fleece which makes a seat of belmont colchis's strand and many jasons come in quest of her now here bassanio is almost romantic in the way he describes portia he gives a very poetic description of this girl he's become he becomes very eloquent in the way he describes her and here he compares portia to the golden fleece now the story is that there was a golden fleece on the island of colchis and jason the hero he went to this island in a ship argo he slew the dragon or the monster that was guarding this golden fleece and he obtained it now a parallel has been made to this mythical story the golden fleece refers to portia because she also has golden hair she has sunny locks sunny golden hair which hangs on her temples which falls about her head like the golden fleece which makes her seat of belmont and therefore her seat of belmont or her home in belmont has now become colchis strand the island of colchis strand means the islet just as on the island of colchis many people went to this island to get this golden fleece likewise many suitors are coming to belmont to get portia finally who was able to win this golden fleece it was the hero jason and therefore he said he says many jasons come in quest of her many jasons refers to many suitors o oh, my antonio had i but the means to hold a rival place with one of them now bassanio comes to the point and he says o oh, antonio if i had the means if i had the wealth to hold a rival place with one of them so many suitors are going to belmont and trying to win portia if i could also go there as a rival as a competitor i have a mind presages me such thrift my mind presages my mind foretells me that i should questionless be fortunate i i have no doubt without a question i will be the fortunate one who will win portia now what gives him this confidence that he will he will be the one who will be fortunate remember he has received from portia's eyes fair speechless messages of love now what do you see about bassanio in this particular extract we can see he's a romantic the way he describes portia is absolutely poetic also if you look at portia just after bassanio has made a choice of the casket the way she expresses herself is nothing short of poetry too bassanio becomes very eloquent in the way he praises portia and her beauty we can also see he's quite ambitious as i said he's enterprising he's optimistic he feels that he will definitely be the one who will be successful now says antonio thou knowest that all my fortunes are at sea now antonio tells bassanio you know all my fortune all my wealth is at sea how all my ships are abroad all my ships are on the ocean neither have i money nor commodity i don't have the money i don't have the cash nor commodity neither do i have anything that is expensive which i can use it as a collateral and raise some money to raise a present sum i don't have money with me because all my fortunes are at sea then he gives a suggestion to bassanio he says therefore go forth try what cred what my credit can in venice to 
that shall be racked even to the uttermost to furnish thee to Belbent to fair Portia. So he makes a suggestion. He tells Bassanio, go into the city of Venice and see how much credit can you take that can be racked it can be stretched to the uttermost go and see from the city of venice how much money you can obtain on a loan you can stretch it to the maximum to furnish thee to belmont to get you ready to go to belmont to the beautiful portia to fair portia go presently inquire go now inquire ask and so will i i will also do the same where money is i will also try and see who can lend us that money and i no question make and i have no doubt about it to have it of my trust or for my sake i have no doubt that we will be able to get some money as loan either on the basis of my name or on the basis of my credibility as a merchant in venice so here a little something that we have to remember is that there are certain improbabilities and absurdities in the play and here is one such example if you remember earlier in the scene when antonio was melancholic in the opening scene and his friends had asked him and they had tried to guess the reason for his melancholy he had said that his all his fortune is not in one bottom trusted and now he says all my fortunes are at sea so this is an absurdity and improbability there are certain examples you could just blame it on oversight so that's fine now what are some probable questions that could be asked from this particular extract so let's quickly look at this why is the trip to belmont called a secret pilgrimage i already described this a bit in detail when you say a pilgrimage it is a trip to a holy place and when you say pilgrimage here it is called so because portia is equated with being a goddess she is a mortal breathing saint what confession does bassanio make to antonio he confesses that he ha he has reduced his wealth by leading a lavish lifestyle much beyond his limited means he has impoverished himself why does bassanio reveal his plans to antonio the reason he is assured of antonio's love he says from your love i have a warranty to unburden my plots and purposes which example of his school days does bassanio narrate this is easy the example of the arrows please write that what does bassanio request antonio to do now what does he request after saying this uh, incident about the arrows what does bassanio request antonio to do he says if you please shoot another arrow the self same way if you let another loan come my way this is his he is requesting for a second loan what is antonio's response after he hears about the childhood experience so you could say he is offended he seems to be offended he seems to be impatient he does not like the roundabout manner in which bassanio speaks he feels that bassanio should come straight to the point he says just tell me what i want to do in your knowledge should be done by me and i'll be pressed into service i will take it, it will become an obligation for me what does it reveal about the friendship between the two so the friendship between antonio and bassanio they are very good friends and antonio is a self sacrificing person he is willing to go to any length to help his friend and so does bassanio though in this particular scene it's not very evident but later in the play we find that bassanio also has equally strong affection for antonio who is the rich lady portia what information is given about her she is fair she has wonderful virtues she is in no way inferior to the other portia we know of she has great wealth the whole world knows about her and renowned suitors are coming to her from all different directions in order to woo her hand in marriage who is the other portia mentioned in the extract the daughter of cato and the wife of brutus what evidence is there to show that portia is known the world over the four winds bring in suitors from 
all the directions. Name some renowned suitors who have come to woo Portia's hand in marriage. So here you will you can mention not just about the six suitors, where we talk about County Palatine, Falcon Bridge, Marcia Libon, then uh, you have uh, the Scottish Lord. You, you could also write about Prince of Aragon, Prince of Morocco. Name some. Now, depending upon the marks, you can write accordingly. Explain the reference to the Golden Fleece. So, mention about Jason going to the island of Colchis, trying to get the Golden Fleece that was guarded by a dragon. So, he is able to slay the dragon and get the Golden Fleece. Likewise, your golden fleece refers to Portia because she has golden locks and people from all the world over are trying to win her hand in marriage. What gives Bassanio the confidence that he would questionless be fortunate? Because he has received fair, speechless messages. What reason does Antonio give for being unable to help Bassanio? He says, all my fortunes are at sea. How is it a contradiction of what Antonio has said earlier in the play? He had said, all my fortunes are not in one bottom trusted. What does he suggest Bassanio should do? He suggests that Bassanio should go into the city of Venice and try to obtain the maximum credit possible. From whom does Bassanio procure the money he required? So he procured the money from Shylock, the Jew, under what conditions is he able to do so? So he is able to borrow this money on the condition that he would return the money within three months on a particular day, on a stipulated date. And if he fails to do so, Shylock will take a pound of Antonio's fair flesh. So with this, we come to the end of today's lesson. I hope it gives you the much needed practice for your forthcoming exams. Thank you children. Happy learning. All the best.